Okay, boys and girls, and everybody else who may not have decided yet, it's project time. Well, kind of, sort of. This project's already kind of done. What we've got is we've got a dual voltage and current meter for your tubes to help you bias things. And we can see, you know, we're running 350 volts and 23 milliamps on our 6v6s and they're both about matched and if we do all of our calculations that would be 67 percent plate dissipation wattage for a 66 67 70 is your maximum recommended in our little bias calculator app for lay phone hooray hooray so how did I make this? What did I make this? Well, I'm not going to give you a detailed extreme how-to, but I will show you a couple of the things I did with this. The concept behind this is I need to be able to do both octal tubes, like your 6L6, 6V6, uh, those, and then I also wanted to be able to do EL84s for the Vox amps. And, um, well, the Weber bias right shows only current and not voltage easily in front of you. Um, I don't know if they still make the bias king anymore. All the ones I could find on AliExpress uh, were current only or they were just a adapter you had to stick on your meter, whatever. I like this and I like that it's analog. It makes me less edgy. It just makes me happier. Um, I have my reasons, but if it was a digital meter, I would probably fuss with it and try to get it absolutely pinpointed on something where, you know, here I'm getting, I can get pretty close. And you can see there's a little bit of, you know, a percent disparagement from, you know, side to side. So we can adjust those and make them perfectly equal, but I mean, we're, we're close enough. And, um, rather than the one that Uncle Doug has kind of made famous the Euro tubes probe that one you get it does one tube at a time So you'd need two of them and It I think it only does octals. There's a different version to do the EL84 the 6BQ5 Mine will do both it'll do either and these sockets on the back here are strictly for storage um, because the stuff is paralleled if I were to stick my fingies on those pins um, I could taste the high voltage from my amplifier uh, so these are just empty sockets that we use as placeholders uh, the pins are recessed in there so I would have to try to get myself shocked so um, that holds the probes when we're not using them they are wired in parallel and I can show you the schematic on how to make one of these and how it works um, the parts are nothing special it's just a plastic box the probes are tube sockets um, a socket and a jack glued together um, and the meters are just a, I have a 50 milliamp DC current meter which it's plausible to get <clears throat> possibly a hundred milliamp version might help for um, maybe doing single-ended amps because they do draw more current, but for most of what I do 50 milliamps is going to be plenty and then my uh, DC voltmeters there are up to 500 volts DC so 500 volts 50 milliamp set there This is all stuff you can get off the jungle site the cord that I used or the wire it's actually just um, computer power cords chopped up. There's three wires and we use them all. Okay, so here's the schematic for our bias testing device here. You probably have seen similar stuff on other channels on YouTube and that's just fine. I don't mind. But uh, the key is, is to get your milliamp meter in the path of the plate. So you want to split that pin from your socket that's going into your amp to the top socket that you're plugging your tube into. 
you need to have that split where all the current that goes through there must flow through your milliamp meter. And then you can see where the voltage meter is. It's basically measuring the voltage from plate to cathode. And between those two measurements, it tells you everything you need to know about the bias of your tube. This is the diagram for the 6L6GC. Um, also tubes like 6CA7, uh, EL34, KT66. Uh, those tubes have the same pinout. So this is your sort of standard octal. Uh, what is it? Is it 70, 7591, I think, is also a octal tube, but that has a different pinout. So that's the only one that's an oddball. But this should work for, like I say, 6L6, 6V6, 6, um, 6K6, uh, the standard octal. And uh, the plate is on pin 3, so you're going to split up the uh, plate there. Uh, so you're going to, 3 is where you're looking for the plate. And then the cathode is on pin 8. Yeah. I hope I did that from memory correctly, otherwise I'm going to be doing editing and fixing that. <laughs> um, and then this is the diagram for an EL84 or 6BQ5. Um, and the plate on that is pin 7. And uh, you need to split that. And that can be very, very tricky working in the small sockets like I did. And then the uh, cathode on those is pin three. So that should be all of the information that you would need to create a device such as this. Uh, plastic box, a little bit of wiring, everything that you need is available from like the jungle site. And in order to get to do both types of tubes, the 9-pin and the octal, and to be able to look at both sides at the same time. I would have to spend a lot, of, lot more money with the stuff that's available on the market, so kind of a cool do-it-yourself project, and I'm glad I did it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Oh, by the way, you're going to learn drilling Bakelite is a nightmare. And those little sockets for the EL84s, those were originally tube saver sockets. Man, they're tight to work in. If you have a swear jar, you might be taking a vacation to the moon with the money you put away. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.